Welcome, listeners, to another episode of I4L Tips to Greatness. I'm Daniel Boyd, and in today's deep dive, Shadows and Light, the complexity of human interactions, we unravel the intricate tapestry of relationships, self-perception, and personal growth. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Sun Tzu. Section 1. The Importance of Clear Boundaries. Boundaries are the lines we draw to protect our peace, but what happens when a line is crossed unintentionally? We'll explore the subtleties of physical and emotional boundaries and how explicit communication is essential in respecting and understanding each other's limits. Boundaries. Invisible yet as crucial as the air we breathe. They're personal sanctuaries we all set, consciously or not. Sometimes, a simple gesture can become a transgression, leading us to an important realization. What one perceives as a congratulatory act, another might receive as an invasion of space. I recall a moment, vivid as a flash of lightning in a serene sky. It was after a bodybuilding competition, an arena of strength and spirit. Traditions run deep in such communities, mirroring camaraderie I've known in the military, a clap on the back, an acknowledgement of achievement. But this time, my gesture was perceived not as a commendation, but as a violation. The clap on the back, meant in the spirit of support, was taken as something entirely different by a person I cared deeply about. Her reaction was immediate, fierce. Bro, I told you I'm not into impact play. Words that pierced the bubble of my understanding. In the moment, believing we stood on the equal footing of mutual respect and understanding, I thought she was jesting, employing the kind of ribbing we'd shared before. So, I responded in kind, with what I thought to be a light-hearted tease, not grasping the gravity of her discomfort. It was a misstep that soon dawned on me as a profound error in judgment. This realization struck a chord of regret. It underscored a pivotal lesson. The essence of communication is not just in the exchange of words, but in the understanding and respect of the other's boundaries and perspectives. My mistake lay not in the act itself, but in failing to immediately recognize her response as genuine discomfort, not jest. It was a moment that taught me the importance of pausing, of truly listening and empathizing before responding, especially when navigating the delicate dynamics of personal relationships. In reflecting upon this incident, I've come to see its occurrence as a pivotal moment of awakening, a painful but necessary illumination of the relationship's underlying dynamics. As much as I was in denial, believing that my actions had inadvertently triggered some form of trauma, this episode eventually revealed the stark reality of our compatibility and the person I was truly dealing with. It was a stark reminder that sometimes what seems like a misstep can actually serve as a crucial wake-up call, compelling us to confront truths about the other person we may have been unwilling or unable to see. This moment of clarity, though arrived at through conflict and misunderstanding, was instrumental in my journey. It served as a catalyst for deeper self-reflection and reevaluation of what I valued in relationships, guiding me towards a path of personal growth and a clearer understanding of emotional boundaries. In hindsight, it was perhaps a blessing that this revelation came sooner rather than later, sparing me further pain and allowing me to learn and move forward with a heightened awareness of myself and how I relate to others. It's here, in these moments of disconnect, we confront the essence of boundaries. They aren't just physical, they are the culmination of past experiences, expectations, and personal comfort zones. It taught me, painfully so, that what may seem innocuous through one's lens can be a jolt through another's. Respecting perceived boundaries is more than an act of courtesy. It's an ongoing dialogue, a lesson in empathy and understanding. It requires us to listen, not just to words, but to the silences between them. It asks of us to be mindful, to recognize that our actions, no matter how well-intentioned, have weight, have impact. In that moment of misunderstanding, I stood at a crossroads of self-reflection and growth. It was a poignant reminder, always seek to understand the boundaries of others, for they are sacred, as sacred as the trust we hope to build within our relationships. Let's carry this with us. The language of boundaries is nuanced, but learning it can bridge worlds, mend fences, and deepen the connections that enrich our human experience. Section 2. Trust Your Perception 
Can we trust our own perceptions, especially when they are questioned by others? It's crucial to have confidence in our memories and judgments while remaining open to reflection. We'll delve into the balance between self-trust and accountability. In the intricate dance of human interaction, we often find ourselves stepping on each other's toes despite our best intentions. Such was the case when an expression of camaraderie, a clap on the back, a gesture of shared triumph, spiraled into a dissonant clash of realities. I'd clapped her on the back, a symbolic well done in the aftermath of a strong man feat. Yet, in her perception, this was an impact beyond comfort, a jolt that triggered a defensive lash out, leading to an accusation that cut deep into the trust and understanding I thought we shared. Her words echoed the term impact play, a concept far removed from the context of our interaction, jarring enough to stop me in my tracks. Herein lies the heart of cognitive dissonance, holding two conflicting beliefs simultaneously. On one hand, my unwavering conviction that my actions were benign, on the other, her staunch belief in their aggression. This dissonance rang loud, shaking the foundation of my self-trust. The fallout was significant. A narrative spun out of an adrenaline-fueled moment led me down a path of self-doubt. Was my recollection of the event accurate? Could I have unknowingly caused harm? The questions circled like vultures over the carcass of my peace of mind. But cognitive dissonance is not just an internal battle, it's an external one as well. When faced with contradictory information, especially from someone you hold in high esteem, the instinct can be to conform, to reshape your memories to fit their narrative. This is where self-trust must be a beacon, unwavering in the fog of contradiction. With time and reflection, I found solace in the consistency of my memories and the intent behind my actions. Through the support of therapy and introspection, the fog lifted, reaffirming my belief in my perception of events. Trusting in oneself doesn't mean infallibility. It means holding on to your truth amidst the turbulent seas of discordant voices. It's a truth I've learned to stand by, a reminder that our perceptions are our own. And while we must always be open to growth and understanding, we should never lose sight of the compass of our reality. Section 3 Emotional health and timing. Love after loss, a delicate venture. Is there an appropriate time to open your heart again? Today, we dissect the significance of emotional readiness and the journey to new connections post-trauma. Grief is a landscape that each of us must navigate in our own way with its own timeline and contours that shape our emotional health. Just five months after losing a partner, a person can find themselves adrift in the throes of mourning, an experience that can profoundly affect the readiness for new connections. It was in this state, unknowingly, that I found myself reaching out for companionship, for something to fill the silence left behind. But grief can be a silent architect, constructing walls around our hearts or bridges to others based on need rather than genuine connection. It can lead us to latch on to someone, not just as a partner, but as a life raft. This is where the roots of emotional codependency can begin to take hold, often unseen, as they quietly weave through the foundations of our being. The new relationship I entered was not standing on the solid ground of mutual support, but on the shifting sands of my unprocessed grief. The emotional codependency that ensued was not immediately apparent to me, it masqueraded as connection and compatibility. But what happens when we lean too heavily on another, particularly when we are yet to stand firmly on our own after such a profound loss? As we intertwine our healing with another's presence, we risk mistaking dependency for love, support for necessity. It's crucial to recognize that while human connection can be a powerful balm, it cannot be the sole remedy for the wounds of loss. There must be greater space for individual healing, for understanding that grief's timeline cannot be rushed, even by the warmth of a new love. The interplay between grief, emotional health, and new relationships is delicate. It requires us to honor our past, our lost loves, and the parts of us that are still mending, while also being open to the new stories waiting to be written. It asks of us to be self-aware, to recognize the difference between moving on and moving forward with intention and self-compassion. 
It was through this complex dance of holding on and letting go, of understanding codependency and seeking self-sufficiency, that I learned the most profound lessons. In seeking new relationships, we must first be whole, not in the sense of being unscarred, but in being at peace with our scars, understanding they are part of our story, not the entirety of it. Only then can we truly share ourselves with another, not as halves seeking to be made whole, but as complete beings ready to share the richness of our journeys. Section 4. Seek Support When Needed In Our Darkest Hours the guidance of a professional can be a beacon of hope. Therapy. Let's discuss its transformative power and why it's a courageous step toward healing. The journey through therapy is often one of the most challenging yet transformative voyages one can embark upon. My own path to healing began in the throes of a darkness that had seeped into every corner of my life following a cascade of traumatic events. The specter of PTSD loomed large its symptoms not just a byproduct of my time in combat zones, but also from the aftershocks of an intense personal relationship that had turned tumultuous. In the safe confines of the therapist's office, I learned to unpack the layers of my trauma, peeling back the complex veneer of emotional responses that had become my armor. Therapy offered a mirror to the soul, one that reflected not just the broken pieces, but the resilience within. It was a space where the unspoken found voice, where the misunderstood found clarity, and where the pain found acknowledgement. As we delved into the intricacies of my experiences, my therapist guided me through various techniques and strategies, from cognitive, behavioral, and EMDE therapy to mindfulness practices, each tool a stepping stone away from the past's haunting grip. We confronted the emotional codependency that had silently taken root, revealing its intricate ties not only to my recent relationship, but also to the loss I had suffered months before. The realization that I was grappling with acute PTSD after the discard was both a shock and a relief. To name it was to tame it, giving me the power to redefine my relationship with my experiences. My therapist's insights were like a compass in a storm, providing direction when all landmarks seemed lost. One of the pivotal moments in this journey was recognizing the role that emotional codependency had played in that relationship. It was a behavior pattern that masqueraded as love, but was really a cry for healing. Therapy taught me further that it's not enough to lean on others to fill the voids left by trauma. Instead, I needed to learn how to further stand even more independently to find even more strength within myself. Through the work we did together, the fog of uncertainty that had clouded my thoughts began to lift. Memories once fuzzy regained their sharpness, not as weapons to wound me, but as lessons to guide me. Sleep, which had once been an elusive stranger, returned as a restful companion thanks to the coping mechanisms I had acquired. In therapy, I found more than just a cure for sleepless nights or a remedy for anxiety. I found a renewed sense of self, a reaffirmation of my own resilience, and a blueprint for living a life not defined by past trauma, but informed by it. Healing from PTSD and emotional trauma is not a linear journey. It's a spiral where one may face the same issues at different depths. Each session in therapy was a step deeper into understanding, a step further from the past, and a step closer to a future where I wield the tools to navigate my mental landscape with confidence and self-compassion. Section 5. Understanding Gaslighting Gaslighting is not just a buzzword. It's a psychological battleground. We'll break down this manipulative tactic, how to recognize it, and strategies to anchor your reality firmly. Gaslighting is a term often used, yet its true impact is understood by those who have walked through its disorienting mist. My own encounter with gaslighting was a dance with doubt where what I knew to be true was constantly called into question by the person I trusted. After an incident that seemed minor at first, I found myself entangled in a web that questioned my intentions, my memories, and my sanity. The playful clap I remembered was cast back at me as a malicious act. Her narrative had the power to make me doubt the very core of who I thought I was, someone who could potentially harm another, even though violence was far from my truth. Dealing with gaslighting begins with grounding oneself in reality. For me, it was about taking a step back and examining the evidence of my behavior across my lifespan. 
It was essential to hold on to the context of my actions and the consistency of my character rather than the singular narrative I was being presented with. Strategy one, seek objective truth. This meant talking to trusted friends, those who could provide an outside perspective on the situation and my character. It was a way to validate my reality when it was being distorted. Strategy two, document interactions. Writing down conversations and keeping a record of events helped me to see the patterns and inconsistencies in the narrative being woven around me. Strategy three, professional support. A therapist provided a neutral space to dissect the experiences without judgment, offering tools to rebuild the trust in my perceptions and to strengthen my mental resilience against such manipulative tactics. Strategy four, set firm boundaries. Once I recognized the gaslighting, it became crucial to set boundaries with the individual. This included limiting interactions and being clear about what was acceptable in communication and what was not. Strategy five, self-care and self-compassion. In the aftermath of gaslighting, it's essential to engage in self-care practices that reinforce one's worth and reality. This could be through meditation, exercise, or simply spending time in activities that affirm one's sense of self. Strategy six, educate oneself about gaslighting. Understanding the mechanics of gaslighting was empowering to my self-efficacy. It helped me to identify it quickly and respond more effectively if faced with similar situations in the future. Gaslighting is an insidious form of manipulation that can leave deep emotional scars. Through my experience, I learned that the path to countering it is paved with the stones of self-assurance, reality checking, and personal agency. It's about reclaiming your narrative and knowing that your truth does not need to be validated by those who would seek to undermine it. Section six, recognition of toxic behavior. Recognizing toxicity in others is as revealing as it is painful. Let's converse about identifying such patterns, protecting our mental space, and healing from their effects. Identifying toxic behaviors in a relationship is often like trying to read the warning signs through a fog, difficult to discern until they're dangerously close. In my journey, toxic behavior manifested through constant criticism, a lack of respect for boundaries, and a persistent undercurrent of manipulation that left me second-guessing my reality. Toxic behaviors are those that consistently undermine one's sense of well-being. They can appear as jealousy, possessiveness, or as subtle as backhanded compliments that slowly erode self-esteem. It's the frequency and pattern of these behaviors that ring the alarm, signaling that something is amiss. The path to recognition began with acknowledgement. Acknowledging that the unsettling feelings I had were valid, that the constant tension, the walking on eggshells, were not hallmarks of a healthy relationship. It was about understanding that love does not belittle, it does not gaslight, and it certainly does not leave one in a perpetual state of anxiety. Healing from these encounters required me to first recognize the toxic traits, both in the relationship and within myself. The path forward involved setting clear boundaries and understanding that I deserved to be treated with respect. It involved learning to say no, to assert my needs, and to not settle for anything that felt demeaning or diminishing. The healing process was incremental. It started with self-reflection, understanding my role in the dynamic and why I was susceptible to such behaviors. It involved utilizing my strong support system of friends and loved ones who offered different viewpoints and reinforced my values. It also meant being even more comfortable with being alone, to be even more comfortable in my own company, to rebuild the relationship I had with myself. But perhaps most importantly, healing meant forgiving myself for the time spent in the toxicity, for the moments of confusion when I allowed it to define my worth. Forgiveness did not excuse the behavior of the person, but freed me from the chains of bitterness, finally seeing the person for who they really are, and opened the door to further personal growth. The final step on this path was the most liberating, reclaiming my narrative. I no longer saw myself as a person who became entangled in toxic behavior, but as someone who had emerged wiser, stronger, and more compassionate. I found solace in sharing my story, in helping others navigate their way out of similar situations, and in the knowledge that while scars remain, they no longer tell a story of pain 
but one of resilience and compassion. Section 7, Letting Go and Moving Forward There is an art to letting go and embracing change. We'll examine the process of releasing the old to make way for the new and the liberation that comes with this difficult choice. Letting go of past relationships, especially those marred by toxicity, is akin to setting down a heavy burden you've been carrying on a long journey. It's a decision marked by both sorrow and liberation, a critical step towards healing and personal growth. In my experience, the process of letting go and moving forward was neither swift nor linear, but it was transformative. The process of letting go. 1. Acknowledgement. The first step was acknowledging the need to let go, to recognize that holding onto a relationship that had caused pain was hindering my ability to move forward and find happiness. 2. Understanding. I sought to understand the dynamics of the relationship, the role I played, and why it was toxic. This involved reflecting on the interactions, behaviors, and patterns that characterized the relationship. 3. Emotional acceptance. Allowing myself to feel the spectrum of emotions, anger, sadness, loss, and eventually acceptance, was crucial. Suppressing these feelings would only delay healing. 4. Forgiveness. Forgiveness came as a form of self-care, not necessarily absolving the other person of their actions, but releasing the grip that confusion, resentment, and pain held on my heart. 5. Reclaiming self. I focused on reclaiming my identity outside of the relationship. This meant rediscovering interests, hobbies, and friendships that I had neglected. Benefits of moving on. 1. Peace of mind. Gradually, the chaos that once dominated my thoughts gave way to tranquility. Letting go allowed me to reclaim my mental space, where peace became the predominant tenant. 2. Self-discovery. This journey was a profound period of self-discovery. Freed from the shadows of the past, I explored new aspects of myself, uncovering strengths and passions I hadn't known before. 3. Healthier Relationships With a clearer understanding of what constitutes a healthy relationship, I became better equipped to establish boundaries and engage in more fulfilling, respectful connections with others. 4. Growth Moving on catalyzed personal growth. It taught more resilience, the value of self-respect, and the importance of making decisions that prioritize my well-being. 5. Hope Perhaps most importantly, letting go rekindled hope. It opened my heart to the possibility of love and joy, grounded in a deeper understanding of myself and a renewed faith in the future. Letting go of past relationships is not about erasure, but about transformation. It's a process that honors the past for its lessons, embraces the present with gratitude, and looks to the future with optimism. This journey, though fraught with challenges, ultimately leads to a richer, more rewarding life experience. Section 8. Focus on self-improvement. Turn pain into power. Channeling energy into self-improvement can transform wounds into wisdom. We'll talk about the personal renaissance that follows the fall. Personal development after emotional upheaval is akin to the regrowth of a forest after a devastating wildfire. Though the immediate aftermath may seem desolate and barren with time and nourishment, new life begins to emerge, often more resilient and diverse than before. My journey through the aftermath of a toxic relationship and the loss of a loved one was a testament to this natural resilience and the transformative power of personal development. Emergence from desolation. In the wake of emotional turmoil, the first sprouts of growth were introspective in nature. It required a deep dive into my own vulnerabilities, understanding how my experiences had shaped me and how I could learn from them rather than be defined by them. This phase was about self-discovery, acknowledging my strengths and weaknesses, and setting intentions for the person I aspired to become. Nurturing growth. Personal development necessitated active nurturing of my mental, emotional, and physical well-being. It involved cultivating habits that promoted healing and growth, regular therapy sessions, mindfulness practices like meditation and journaling, and physical activities that helped release pent-up stress and rebuild confidence in my body's strength and capabilities. Expanding Horizons 
As my journey progressed, personal development meant pushing beyond the comfort zones that had become my refuge. It involved challenging myself to try new things, to engage with new communities, and to open myself up to new perspectives and experiences. This expansion wasn't just about broadening my horizons, but about redefining my identity beyond the scars of my past. The Power of Creativity and Expression A pivotal aspect of my transformation was rediscovering the power of creativity and expression. Whether through woodworking, writing, or engaging in martial arts, each act of creation was a step towards reclaiming my narrative. These activities provided a productive outlet for processing my emotions and experiences, turning them into something tangible and often beautiful, building resilience and empathy. The most profound impact of personal development was on my resilience and empathy. Having navigated the depths of emotional pain and come out the other side, I found a newfound strength within myself, a resilience that wasn't about being unbreakable, but about being adaptable, about finding ways to rise again after falling. This journey also deepened my empathy. Understanding my own pain helped me connect with others on a more profound level, recognizing the shared human experience in our individual struggles and triumphs. Transformation. The transformation brought about by personal development after emotional upheaval is not a destination, but a continual process of becoming. It's about evolving, learning, and growing from each experience, carrying forward the lessons and strength gained into every new challenge and opportunity. This process taught me that while emotional upheaval can shatter the world as we know it, it also presents a unique opportunity to rebuild that world, piece by piece, into something even more meaningful and beautiful. Personal development, in this context, becomes not just an act of healing, but an act of rebirth, emerging from the ashes, not just to survive, but to thrive. Section 9. Acceptance Acceptance is the road to tranquility. We explore the journey to accepting what we cannot change in others, the power it gives us over our own lives, and the peace it brings. Acceptance, in the wake of emotional upheaval, is a paradoxical state, both a challenge and a source of peace. My own path to acceptance was strewn with obstacles, each demanding its due attention, negotiation, and ultimately, understanding. It's a journey marked by the struggle to let go of what was, to confront the reality of what is, and to embrace the uncertainty of what will be. Challenges of Acceptance 1. Facing Reality The initial challenge is confronting the stark reality of loss and change, whether it's the end of a relationship, the passing of a loved one, or the dissolution of what we believed our life to be, acceptance demands that we look these truths in the eye, acknowledging their permanence. 2. Letting go of control. We often harbor an innate desire to control our circumstances, to steer our lives in the direction of our choosing. Acceptance requires the relinquishment of this control, the understanding that some things are beyond our ability to change, and the recognition that sometimes the only control we have is over our reactions and our path forward. 3. Dealing with Emotional Residue Acceptance is not merely a cognitive act, but an emotional process that involves wading through the residue of anger, denial, bargaining, and depression. Each stage must be addressed and processed, a challenge that can feel insurmountable at times. 4. Identity and self-perception. Often, our sense of self is entangled with the aspects of our lives that undergo upheaval. Acceptance challenges us to redefine who we are in the absence of these elements, a task that requires introspection, time, and often a reconstruction of our self-image, peace and acceptance. Despite its challenges, acceptance is a gateway to peace. It's a state of grace that arrives often quietly, bringing with it the serenity of understanding and the clarity of perspective. 1. Emotional Release The act of acceptance is, in essence, an emotional release, a sigh of the soul that allows us to lay down the burdens of resistance and denial. This release is liberating, offering a sense of lightness that comes from no longer fighting against the tide of reality. 2. Living in the Present Acceptance anchors us in the present moment. It encourages us to live fully in the now, unburdened by the past and undistracted by the uncertainties of the future. 
This presence of mind opens us to the joys and opportunities that surround us, often unnoticed in our struggles against acceptance. Three, growth and transformation. In acceptance, we find the soil for growth and transformation. It's a fertile ground that nurtures resilience, wisdom, and a deeper capacity for love and compassion, both for ourselves and for others. Four, new beginnings. With acceptance comes the recognition that endings are also beginnings. It offers a vantage point from which we can envision a new path forward, marked by hope and the potential for new joys, relationships, and discoveries. Acceptance is not a destination, but a continuous journey, one that intertwines challenge and peace in the tapestry of our lives. It's a process that teaches us to flow with the river of life, embracing its twists and turns with grace and fortitude, and finding within them the seeds of peace and renewal. Section 10. Self-Love and Worth Self-Love is your sanctuary. Self-Worth your armor. We'll discuss building and nurturing both, especially after encounters that challenge them. In the aftermath of emotional turmoil, the journey towards healing and the foundation for building stronger future relationships often begins with the cultivation of self-love and the reaffirmation of self-worth. This process, while deeply personal and unique to each individual, is a universal cornerstone for those seeking to emerge from the shadows of past experiences into a brighter, more resilient future. Self-love as the cornerstone. Self-love is the act of valuing oneself, of nurturing the mind, body, and spirit with kindness, patience, and respect. It's about acknowledging your needs and giving yourself permission to meet them, about setting boundaries that protect and preserve your well-being. In the wake of a toxic relationship or personal loss, self-love becomes an act of rebellion against the narratives that may have sought to diminish your worth. 1. Healing Through Self-Compassion Healing begins with self-compassion, with treating yourself with the same kindness you would offer to a friend in distress. This means forgiving yourself for past mistakes, understanding that they do not define your worth, and recognizing the strength it takes to move forward. 2. Rediscovering self-worth. Your worth is inherent, not contingent on external validation or the presence of another. Reaffirming self-worth involves recognizing your inherent value, celebrating your strengths, and accepting your vulnerabilities as part of your human experience. 3. Setting Healthy Boundaries Self-love teaches the importance of setting healthy boundaries, of saying no to situations or individuals that threaten your peace. These boundaries are not barriers to keep others out, but safeguards that allow you to engage with the world from a place of strength and self-respect. Building Stronger Relationships The journey of self-love and the reaffirmation of self-worth not only pave the way for healing, but also lay the groundwork for building healthier, more fulfilling relationships in the future. 1. Attracting like-minded individuals When you value yourself and understand your worth, you attract individuals who respect and value you in kind. Self-love acts as a beacon, drawing towards you relationships that mirror the respect and kindness you afford yourself to, fostering authentic connections. With a strong sense of self-love, you're more likely to engage in relationships that are genuine and authentic, where you can be fully yourself without fear of judgment or rejection. This authenticity is the bedrock of deep, meaningful connections. 3. Navigating Relationships with Resilience A foundation of self-love equips you with the resilience to navigate the ups and downs of relationships. It provides the strength to address conflicts constructively, to advocate for your needs, and to walk away from situations that no longer serve you. 4. Cultivating Mutual Growth and Support Relationships built on the principles of self-love and worth are characterized by mutual growth and support. They are partnerships where each individual is encouraged to thrive, where the journey of personal development is shared, and where love is a source of empowerment. Self-love and self-worth are not just the aftermath of healing. They are the very essence of it. They transform the way we see ourselves and the way we engage with the world around us. By prioritizing these principles, we not only heal from our past, but also open ourselves to a future rich with possibilities, connections, and the profound joy of being loved for exactly who we are. Section 11, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. 
Maslow's Hierarchy, a blueprint for understanding human motivation. How does it apply to relationships? Let's analyze how the quest for esteem can drive us and shape our interactions. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs offers a compelling framework for understanding personal growth and its impact on relationship dynamics. At its core, this model suggests that human behavior is motivated by a hierarchy of needs, starting from the most basic physiological requirements to the more complex psychological desires for esteem and self-actualization. Personal growth, especially in the aftermath of emotional upheaval, often involves ascending through Maslow's hierarchy, a journey that inevitably influences the dynamics of our relationships, the esteem stage and its complexities. The esteem stage, characterized by the human desire for respect, recognition, and self-esteem, plays a pivotal role in how we interact within our relationships. For many, reaching and fulfilling the needs of this stage is crucial for personal satisfaction and well-being. It encompasses both the esteem one receives from others and the esteem one holds for oneself. However, challenges arise when individuals become fixated on this stage, particularly when their sense of self-worth is predominantly derived from external validation rather than internal self-acceptance and self-respect. This fixation creates a fragility in one's self-concept, where admitting fault or acknowledging a mistake becomes a threat to their self-image. In relationships, this can manifest as an inability to apologize or change behaviors that harm others, as such admissions are seen as undermining their esteem in the eyes of others and, more critically, in their own eyes. The Stagnation at the Esteem Stage People who become stuck at the esteem stage struggle with open guardedness and authenticity in relationships. Their need for external validation drives them to portray a persona that aligns with what they believe will garner admiration and respect rather than expressing their true selves. This dynamic hinders the development of genuine connections, as relationships built on facades are inherently unstable and unfulfilling. Moreover, this stagnation leads to a cycle where the individual continuously seeks out relationships or situations that reinforce their desired self-image, neglecting the opportunity for introspection and personal growth that would inevitably propel them toward self-actualization. Self-actualization, the pinnacle of Maslow's hierarchy and an ongoing journey, represents the fulfillment of one's potential and the realization of one's true self, which is often achieved through overcoming challenges, including those found within personal relationships. Moving beyond esteem to self-actualization. Personal growth involves recognizing the limitations of seeking external validation and understanding that true esteem comes from within. It requires acknowledging one's flaws and mistakes as opportunities for learning and development rather than threats to one's self-image. In doing so, individuals can move beyond the esteem stage, fostering relationships that are based on authenticity, mutual growth, and a deeper, more meaningful connection. For those stuck at the esteem stage, the journey towards self-actualization begins with the courage to look inward to challenge the self-imposed narratives that dictate their worth, and to embrace the open-heartedness that comes with genuine self-exploration. It is in this space of open-heartedness that true personal growth occurs, paving the way for healthier relationships that contribute to, rather than detract, from one's journey toward the self-actualization stage. In essence, Maslow's model not only helps us understand our motivations and needs, but also illuminates the path through which personal growth can transform our relationships, leading us to more fulfilling interactions and ultimately to a richer, more authentic life. As we close today's episode, let's carry forward the wisdom gleaned from the complexities of human interactions. This is Daniel Boyd, guiding you through life's mazes with insight and information. Until we meet again, Aim for greatness by navigating life thoughtfully and courageously.